Just get in His presence. You are overcome with joy. I'm overcome with joy today. These are tears of joy. My goodness, I cry over a good episode of Gilligan's Island, so don't worry about me. But I love the Lord today, and I love I love what I feel here. I praise God for what I feel here. His presence, and you know, people are saying, drove 25 hours. Well, I'll just say this. They say a church alive is worth the drive, all right? <laughs> And uh, it, it was worth the drive. We've had a great time with Keith and Stephanie. Man, you guys are awesome. We just love you. Appreciate you with great. I have a great uh, token of appreciation and gratitude for my brother. And I love him very much. I'm so glad to be here with y'all today. Um, man, I want to sing a little bit. And uh, then we're gonna, I'm going to invite my wife here in a few moments to share just a few thoughts with you. Then we're going to share the word today. We just pray that. Anything that's done on this stage today would bring edification to your walk with Jesus Christ. He's the He is the special guest of honor today. Two or three gathered here. He is here today. He yeah. is the special guest of honor. It's an honor to get to play with my brother. Man, I think the last time we played together was at a men's retreat in down in Texas. Been probably maybe five years ago, four or five years ago. I'm not sure. Um, I've slept since then, but I asked him to help me out today. Good to have my nephew back here on the drums, rocking the drums. Thanks, Nick. We just want to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. So, if you know this, well, feel free, free to sing with us. Amen. So at the cross At the cross Where I first Saw the and the burden of my heart rolled away. Yes, it did. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now.
I think that the enemy of our soul is trying to rob us of vision. And I love this song because it tells us so clearly right there at Calvary that's where I received my vision. That's where I received my sight. I just want to pray over your vision today that it would be renewed that it would be restored. Would that be alright? Father, I just pray over these good people today. I thank you, Lord, that you have a plan and a purpose. You have a plan and a purpose to prosper this church, to reach out into this community, to be a, law to, uh, a, a light to the lost. And I pray today over vision. Renew, restore, replenish. We thank you for Calvary. For that's where we were saved. And by faith today, we say we received our sight right there. We can see, Lord. And I thank you for hope. And I thank you for plans. And I thank you for a future for this church. Bless your people today, God. In Jesus' name, it was there my faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Let him minister to you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. she would want me to tell you my real name. It is Boris, but since I've been little, they've called me Mo, and it just kind of stuck. And so I encourage you, please go check out my website. It's mohoward.com, but uh, I got to tell you if, you, if you type in M-O-E, you're going to get one of the stooges, okay? <laughs> so make sure you type in mohoward.com, and you'll find us there. We love to stay in touch with people. We're on Facebook as well, and we just... Uh, we often try to put a, a word of encouragement on there on our Facebook page. And, and, um, and I, I like to call it get a faith lift. You ever need a faith lift? Amen. So we try to put faith lifts on our web page. And uh, just want to be an encouragement to the body of Christ. Amen. Well, a few years ago, I, I uh, entered a song into a songwriting contest. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But... Long story short, the, the song won the songwriting contest, and I believe because it was my pastor's prophetic prayer that launched it up. And uh, so long story short, we got to travel out to Nashville, Tennessee, and record it in Omni Sound Studios, and it was just incredible. And uh, for time's sake, I won't tell the whole story today, but uh, the name of the song is Sacred Gift, and I wrote it to honor my dad. Man, I'm missing Dad this morning. Keith, I, one of the things I wanted to say about you is, is you've become kind of like Dad to me because I, I, I used to call Dad just immediately for that, that scripture reference or that encouragement, and now I find myself calling my big brother. And, uh, so, and you know, Keith was saying he was second to the oldest, I'm second to the youngest, which makes us in the middle. And I like to say that the best is in, you know, an Oreo cookie. The best is in the middle, right? So, anyways, but man, I appreciate my brother. 
Keen said, "You guys, man, you guys got a great pastor here." And, and uh, but uh, hey, man, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I wrote this song to honor Dad, and uh, uh, it, the title of the song is called "Sacred Gift." And Dad just really he lived his his life in such a way that uh, man, he his, he was a gift. He was a gift to his community, a gift to his church, and and. Um, so the song is really just a worship song, is what it is, because Dad loved to worship, and uh, and um, so I just pray to bless you today. But one of the things that I like to encourage the church with is this thought: is that every good and perfect gift cometh from the Father of Light. So I I dare say that today there are some perfect gifts out here in this audience, and man, there are things that you are just naturally uh, that are natural gifts from the Father, and I want to encourage you to find a way. To honor the Lord with that gift. Amen. I pray this will bless you today. It's called Sacred Gift. This is my sacred gift. Round with genuineness. Filled with gratefulness. Yeah, is all I have to give. Lord, that is why with all the life we live. Here is my offering. Here is my everything. Bottom of your heart. Here is my offering. So here is my offering. Here is my everything. Here is my everything. Here is my living. Here is my living gift that I bring. Gift that I bring. Here's my life for you. Here is my life. I'm letting your love shine through. I'm letting your love shine through. Creator of all I do. 
creator of all I do, I live for you. I live for you. This is my sacred gift. This is my sacred gift. Oh, my sacred Father, we just, amen. Father, right now in this sacred moment, we just, in our, the very best way we can, we just say, here is our life for you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. We say yes to him, his will, and his way, and all that he has in store for us. We give you praise today, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I want to invite my better half to come up here. Miss Leah Joy, would you just come? And she's going to greet you and share uh, her heart with you. I am excited. I, I'm so proud of her. She just recently uh, finished her first book. And, man, I've been blessed by her for 20 years. And now you are going to get to be blessed by random thoughts from a redeemed heart. Babe, just come and just share your heart with the people today. Thank you. I'm not quite that tall, <laughs> except for Howard Ben. <laughs> not for their shorter women. Um, I just love the Lord today, and I'm so grateful to get to be here with you. And I'm going to try to keep it short because I know that uh, my husband has a message. And sometimes I can get long-winded because I really enjoy talking about the Lord. I can talk to you about the Lord all day long. I guess I get forgiven because I keep getting invited back up on the stage, so it's be all right. The Lord is so good, and his mercy is so rich and just the attributes of God are so deep that you can get lost in thought just in the attributes of God and who he is as our father and recently he's just been telling me I'm more than just your Lord I'm more than just your God and I'm more than just your father I'm your daddy I'm the one who first created you first knew you first loved you handpicked your DNA and brought you into this world and you know no matter what we go through in life what our circumstances some of us are and raised in wonderful amazing homes and you know it, it's just such an honor to have parents who just have loved you all your life but some of us come from homes that are very difficult and very broken and maybe abusive and sometimes it's hard for us to view that amazing picture of God and who he is but if you come from a place like that where your life has been very broken and your family's broken you can just wipe that slate clean and think about God as what kind of dad would you want in your life what kind of perfection would you want? And I can guarantee that God is ten times greater than anything that you can imagine or think of. As good as you could be to a child, as wonderful as we can be as parents, God's even better than I am. And sometimes that's hard to fathom because I love, I have three children, and I love them to the end of the world and back. And to imagine that God loves me more than, than I love my children. I remember that day I held them in my arms and I looked down at them, and they mirror image who you are. It's just a beautiful thing. And God loves us like that. I have some notes because I was going to try to stay on track and not get off on a rabbit trail. This is a thought that the Lord's recently put on my mind and I wanted to share it with you. The game of Red Rover is on my mind this morning. It's a weird name. I guess it made the perfect rhyme. Red Rover, Red Rover, let so-and-so come over. You know, we all played that game as kids probably. Maybe it didn't make it this far. Maybe it's just a Texas thing. <laughs> Always fun if you're the so-and-so whose name is called over. Not so fun otherwise. Everyone wants to be accepted and loved, and I sure do. When I feel like no one knows my name, I remember that he does. My Father in Heaven has been calling out my name before I could hear his voice. He's calling out your name as well. Did you know your name is written on the palms of his hands? Isaiah 49, 16 says, Look here, I have made you a part of me, written you on the palms of my hands. You are unforgettable. He wants you to know that he is calling you today to come on over. He loves you with forever love and a hug that won't quit. And that's who our God is. He loves us with a forever love. His love will never quit on us. And your name today is written on the palms of his hands. He's looking down at it and reading off your name. Don't you love the Coca-Colas that have to share a Coke with, with whoever? <laughs> My kids are always looking for their names in the stores trying to find their name. Spelled just right. And I've noticed some people recently tape it with their own name over it because they can't find their spelling. 
but God has your name spelled out just exactly as it's supposed to be. And he calls you by name today. He's calling you, come on over into my arms and sit in the throne with me and let me hug on you today. Let's just talk about your problems together. Let's hang out. Amen. That's how our God is. He just loves us so deeply, so deeply. Thank you for having us with you today. We are really enjoying it. Sound crew is going to hate me before this day is over. I'm tearing up all the equipment. I almost knocked the microphone on the floor. Um, listen, we, we want to receive a love offering, and we're going to do that right now at this time. And so I'm just going to invite our, our ushers, if they would, to get in place and, and get ready to receive this uh, love offering. And I want to encourage you this way. Just uh, here's the way. Isaiah said, you my you've been using one Lord sent me and Samuel replied speak for your servant is listening and Moses cried out for whom shall I say will send me when a voice more from the blaze a voice to convey said I am Surpassed I am. I am the way maker of the life giver. I am. I am the, the son of man on the song you see in desperate need. The great I am.
It's more important than anything. Matter of fact, the most important thing today is that you make that connection with the Lord. Amen. And that you're encouraged and you're strengthened in your faith. If you have your Bible, Exodus chapter 15 is where we're at today. And uh, while you're turning there, I'll just I'll just tell you this. Um, Keith had made mention of the, the little guitar out there. Well, I, I, I tell you, the Lord has, has uh, developed a uh, ministry in our heart. It's called Love with No Strings Attached. A few, about a year and a half ago, the Lord really put it on our heart when we were in Nashville. And so what we do is we go up and down the streets of Broadway and we just meet guitarists uh, on a face-to-face -face basis. And a lot of times I'll just connect with them and, and I'll just listen to whatever they're playing, whatever they're singing. And I maybe say something to them like, hey, what is that chord progression? Or what's that neat chord you just played? And just really let them know that I'm listening. And then when the time is right, when we feel that unction of the Holy Spirit, we just put, reach in a bag, and grab out a, a package of guitar strings, and we place it in their hands. And I just tell them, brother, the Lord wants you to know that he loves you with no strings attached. It's been an incredible ministry. Uh, the first time we did it, it was right on the corner of church and second street uh second street i was like lord are you trying to tell me something to or get or do we need to take the church to the people what is it you know and so we're really excited uh we love this ministry and so that's what that's all about if you have any loose change i know probably all the little ones just got the loose change and if that's okay if they did that's okay but that's what that little guitar is all about back there so uh thank you so much uh keith my goodness you have bless my spirit already and I, I thank you man the bible says to know them that labor among you and to love them and respect them and i appreciate your labor of love man and to god be the glory now if you have exodus 15 uh, let's begin reading there in verse 22 and it says there that moses brought israel from the red sea and they went out into the wilderness of shur and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Everybody say, found no water. Found no water. Verse 23, and when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Everyone say bitter. Bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. And people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, he being Moses, cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Let me hear everybody say, the waters were made sweet. The waters were made sweet. Amen. Don't you know that Jesus wants to make that bitter water sweet again in your life amen and it, let's continue reading there and the waters were made sweet there he made for them a statute and an ordinance and there he proved them he tested them and said if you will diligently hearken the voice to the voice of the lord thy god and will do which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that heals thee. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. And we pray today that it would be encouragement and it would bring life to this body today. And Lord, that your people would be strengthened from your word today. We love you so much. Lord, anoint my lips. Help me, Lord, to speak what you've placed in my heart today. I pray today at the close, Lord, that your people would respond to your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So Moses, he brings them, uh, brings Israel from the Red Sea. And you guys remember the story, right? You've all seen the movies. The miracle has happened. And and they cross the Red Sea now, and and uh, they're in the wilderness of Shur. And um, you know, I I I don't 
I, I don't know that I can ever tell you that I've actually lived in the wilderness, but a few weeks ago, Lee and I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and we were living in a, in a hotel room with uh, our three children and us and our dog for five days. And let me tell you, I felt like I was in the wilderness. <laughs> what I mean by that, because I, I didn't have a place to call home. You ever remember that old song, uh, 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 See the Bright Light Shine, it's about home time. And there's a line in there that says, uh, this world is, uh, is wilderness. I'm ready for deliverance. And this is the best way that I can relate to this. I, I know it's easy for us to point fingers at the Israelites and say, how dare they murmur and get upset and complain and, and all this. But if we are honest, when we stand in line at the McDonald's for more than seven minutes, if we're not careful, we get a little bit agitated. Can I get an amen? Yeah. <laughs> may have nothing to do with water but our belly's a little bit hungry and we're ready to be fed, fed because it's fast food right <laughs> i know that don't happen to none of y'all but maybe to me <laughs> amen but this is where they're at they find themselves in the wilderness and they don't have a place to call home and it says that they've been traveling for three days can you imagine uh, about one million people. <clears throat> Moses is leading out of there and they've been walking, marching for three days and they have had nothing to drink. And I, you know, my wife and I were blessed last year. We got to go to Jerusalem and, and see the Holy City. It was a gift to our family and it was such a blessing. But let me tell you, it gets hot over there. Kind of like over here. <laughs> I woke up at 6 this morning and, and went outside and it was 91 degrees. I was like, man, it's hot in Arizona. I thought it was hot in Texas, man. It's hot in Arizona. We lived 39 years in Texas. Man, it's hot over there in Israel. And they have been three days without water. So can you relate to maybe what they're feeling, what they're going through? They've been marching for three days. So not, they're not just sitting on the couch at home with it hot. They've been marching three days. They've been led into the wilderness. And they're tired and they're hungry and they're thirsty. And no doubt, probably their feet are, are covered with sand and dust. And they finally make it to this place called Mara. And can you see them? They're coming up to Mara and they can see the water. And they're, and they're thinking, oh man, we're finally going to get a... A drink. We're going to satisfy our thirst. And they get there and the water is bitter. All of the promise, all of the potential to satisfy their need, but no return on their investment, if you will. No return because they had walked all that way and they get there and now they can't drink it because it's bitter. It's it's poisonous. I, I remember a, a few years ago, it's been 15 years ago, my son Caleb uh, was four years old and we had been traveling late and we arrived at our destination about midnight and he had fallen asleep in, in the car and so he didn't get to eat dinner with us when we, when we went through the McDonald's. I'm just kidding, that's an inside joke, all right? But, <laughs> Uh, but he didn't get to eat with us. And so um, um, he, we get to the room and all of a sudden he wakes up and he says, Dad, I'm hungry. And I remembered there was a vending machine down in the lobby. And I thought, I'll run down there and I'll grab him a Snickers bar that'll tide him over until the next morning. I got my quarters together. I went down to the lobby and I'm about to put in the money and ride over the the place where you insert the money is a sign that says out of order. Oh, I was so disappointed. I mean, because there was all the potential to satisfy my son's need for the night. Do you, you see what I'm saying? And here, these 
Israelites come to the place of Mara. There's all the potential to satisfy their need, but they cannot drink the waters because it is bitter. Do you know that people in our community, all they really want is a fresh cup of water. They just, and maybe they don't know how to say it, but that's really what they're looking for. We have a fresh cup of water in Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, is anyone thirsty? Let him come unto me and drink. And out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Amen. You and I have all the potential to satisfy the needs of those around us. Not because of our own ability. But because of what Jesus has said and what he has accomplished. And they just want a fresh drink of water. Do you know when we're in line at McDonald's or wherever we're at, instead of getting upset or, 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 or uh, agitated, why don't we smile? Why don't we say an encouraging word? You and I, we are soft and light. That's what the Word of God says. We are soft and light. You know, if you season your conversation with the right amount of seasoning, it will be desirable. Man, I'm telling you, you put the right amount of seasoning on a steak, man, it is irresistible. Can I get an amen? Yeah. And that's the same way with our conversation and our witness. If we will put just the right amount of Jesus in it, it will be desirable. Yeah. You know, sometimes we don't even have to say the name of Christ. I encourage you when there's an opportunity to share His name. But in this day, this dark age that we are living in, it is uh, if we will smile and, and, and greet someone with a kind word, that is being a witness. And when you develop a relationship with someone, that is the perfect time to share Jesus with them. And I don't know why I'm talking about McDonald's a lot today, but uh, I developed a relationship with a young lady uh, through the drive through the McDonald's. My wife says I go there way too much. And I agree. I do. I do. I'm sorry. Pray for the preacher. But uh, there was a young lady that I met there. And over the course of two years, when you go five or six times a week, she begins to recognize me. So every time I come through the drive through many times it was for the dollar coke. I'm just going to be honest. Okay. All right. But began to develop a relationship with this young lady. Most of the time, it was just a smile and, hey, how are you doing today? And over the course of two years, it got to, uh, there was a time that my wife was with me and uh, she had Starbucks in her, in her hand. And the girl noticed that Leah had Starbucks and she said, oh man, I wish I had some Starbucks. And so Leah and I just pulled around to the Starbucks a couple blocks away. Leah went in and purchased her a drink and we came back and just gave her a, a, her own cup of Starbucks. Just something simple. Just something simple. Just a, a cup of fresh water. But do you know, when the time came, when that young lady needed someone to go to prayer with, do you know who she asked to pray with? Mm -hmm. It was my wife and I. Just a little bit of Jesus, church. Season your opportunity with Jesus. People just want a fresh cup of water. That's all they want. That's all they want. So here the Israelites are, and man, they're complaining, and they're upset, and Moses, and they're saying to Moses, what do we got to drink now, Moses? Now you got to get this picture, there's a million people, and the Bible doesn't tell us how many are complaining, but let's take 10%, if you will, that's 100,000 people. I noticed that the Cardinal Stadium seats about 72,000, and I, I say, I'm a, forgive me, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. So. <laughs> But I've seen when the game is on the line, that stadium gets really loud. And is that the truth? Yeah. Amen. The Cardinal fans, you get really loud because the game is on the line. Hey, people, the game was on the line here. People were hungry. They were thirsty. They've been, they're out in the wilderness. They're out in the desert. They've been three days without water. So I'm thinking probably 100,000 people were getting pretty loud. Moses, what are we going to drink? What are we going to do now? And I want you to see what Moses does. And I want to talk to all the men here today with this point. 
It is never wrong. It is always right for you and I to call on the name of the Lord. Always. It is always right. And so Moses finds himself in a, a jam, in a tight spot. And what does he do? It says there in 20, uh, verse 25 that he cries unto the Lord and the Lord shows him a tree. Which when he cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet again. You know, Moses had to act in faith and in obedience. Hey Moses, there's a tree over here. I want you to take the tree, throw it in the water. The water's going to be sweet. Is that not the craziest thing you've ever heard? Does that make sense? The scripture tells us that God's ways are higher than our ways. And I want to encourage you today. When you call on the Lord to act in obedience to what he tells you to do. It may not make any sense to you, but when you call on the Lord, how many of you know that our God, amen, the song said, our God's a big God. Yes. Nothing is impossible with our God. Amen. 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 Yes. And so when he tells you to go get a tree and throw it in the water, <laughs> dude, he's got a reason for that. He's got a purpose. And he's got a plan. He may tell you, Go down the street and be a witness of McDonald's. I don't know. You talk to him. Amen. You talk to him. You hear from the Lord. And then you respond in obedience. I want to share one scripture with you today. Over in Deuteronomy chapter 28. It tells us there. Verse number 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. We have to hear the voice of the Lord God, our God, and then we have to respond in what? Obedience. And if you read this passage, that's when blessing comes. When they reacted, not reacted, when they responded in obedience, that's where blessing came. Moses finds himself in a tight spot and he cries out to the Lord, Lord, what are we going to do? The Lord gives him the assignment. He gives him instruction. And Moses responds in obedience. And that is when the blessing comes. The water is made sweet. And you know we talk about the work of Christ in the New Testament. What a wonderful miracle it was. When he broke the bread. And he blessed the fish. And 5,000 people ate. And they had leftovers. But let's look at this miracle. One million people come to this bitter <laughs> water. And the Lord blesses the water. And everyone, one million people are able to drink. That is a miracle. Amen. Our God is a big God. Amen. He is a big God. Nothing is too hard for our Lord. And you know that tree... The Lord had a purpose for that tree. The tree is a foreshadow. It is a symbol of Jesus Christ on the cross. Do you know that the Lord wants to be, if, you, if you'll allow me, thrown down into your mess <laughs> and make your mess sweet again? He doesn't have a problem with getting his hands dirty and getting into your situation and making it sweet again. He stood and cried in a loud voice. In John 7 verse 37. He said is anyone thirsty? Let him come unto me and drink. And out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. I like to say rivers. 
because I, some translations say streams. I like rivers because I've been driving across some rivers all across this nation. I finally got to see what a river really looks like. The Mississippi River, that's huge. The Tennessee River is big. The Colorado River, big. Amen. And that's what God wants to do in mine and your life. He wants to flow in a big way Amen. in your life. Amen. From the depths of who you are, He wants to flow in and through your life. I want to ask you today, is, has this life in any way made your heart sad or bitter or hurt? The Lord today is here to encourage you. He's here today to make it sweet again. He's here to refresh you. He's here to encourage you today. And you know, I know that when we leave this place, we can call unto the Lord and, and He'll hear our prayer. But the Word does tell us in Galatians 6 and 2, it says to bear you one another's burden. You know, if you and I are burdened today, we can come down here to the front here in a few moments and I guarantee there's some brothers and sisters in this room that are going to gather, gather with you and we're going to pray with you and we're going to see that sweet love of Jesus flow in your life. Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. 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 And Pastor Keith, I, I, I don't know if you have anyone that can come and play softly. Maybe it's you. And, but uh, I, I want to ask us to bow our hearts in prayer. And then in a few moments, I'm just going to ask you to just come up and, and find a place across the front if you need special prayer. I'm going to ask everybody that can to come and find a place to pray because I feel like the Lord wants to speak to all of us. But if you're here and you need special prayer this morning, we want to ask you to stand across the front. And my wife and I want to come and join with you. And any of the elders, Pastor Keith, anyone that wants to come and stand with us and pray and believe, we want to invite you to do so. But Father, we just come to you and we humble ourselves before we, we are humble, Lord, today. And your love that we feel that is just flowing in this house today. And I pray today for your people. If there be anyone here today that is burdened or heavy laden, I pray today that we would receive your invitation. You said in Matthew, come unto me, all who were weary, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I pray today, Lord, if there be anyone here that is burdened in any way, Lord, today, that they would just come to you and receive that fresh cup of water that you have for them. I pray today, Lord, Lord, that the captive would be set free. Lord, those that may be in darkness would be sprung forth into light. Lord, I thank you that you are our hope. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that nothing is too hard for you, God. May we be reminded today of your faithfulness. May we be reminded of the sacrifice that you made. And you made it easy for us, Lord. All we had to do is say yes. Praise Spirit. So Father, we just pray today that your Holy Spirit would just rest on this place. Lord, come close. Be near. Speak to your children today. Speak to your children today. Father, we love you. Amen. Would you, would you please, if you're able, please come and find a place to, to pray this morning around the front.